deserve it, O oh Lord God. Lord God, you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord God. Lord God, without you, there would be no us. And so, God, we want to glorify you this evening, O oh God. Lord God, we're thanking you for our lying down and rising and seeing this day, this day we've never seen before and never will again. And so as we go into this teaching tonight, oh Lord God, I ask that you be in the midst. I ask, oh Lord God, that you speak through our pastor tonight, oh Lord God. Decrease him and increase in him. I pray this over all that are in this class tonight, each and every household represented here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You all heard that prayer from this newlywed. You heard this prayer from this newlywed. Praise God. We congratulate Pastor and Mrs. DJ Bailey. Praise God. May God uh, bless you with long life and, and happy and blessed marriage. And may Jesus Christ always be the center. May he prosper you in many ways. Well, bless the Lord. We're continuing. And this is week three of our course, How to Build a Hedge of Thorns Around a Rebellious Loved One. By next week, you don't want to miss next week because next week you get the practical application. You get the practical steps on how to practice. Somebody's going down next week. Praise God. Amen. The devil's going down next week. Praise God. Hey, hey, the devil's on the run now. And so uh, tonight we're going to look at, as we build this foundation for this course, build this foundation. This is week three of the foundation, and we want to look at Hosea chapters one to three. So download Hosea one to three or open your Bible to Hosea one to three. Um, this course is designed, the Holy Spirit gave me this course uh, early back in the summer. I said, many people need it. And the Holy Spirit reminds me of how this, these teachings have helped me in the past, have helped my family, and have helped a lot of people to apply the principles of God's word to get, not only get your loved ones delivered, but this course will help you to get delivered. And as we take a good look at ourselves, as we look at ourselves, as we do what First Corinthians chapter 11 says, let a man examine himself as we examine ourselves and we see stuff in us that ought not to be, or we see habits or attitudes or things that need to change. We can apply the principles of this course and get ourselves delivered. Yes, I believe in practicing self-deliverance. I've been a deliverance pastor since, oh, 19... Mm, 19, you know, back there, I've been a deliverance pastor. And not only has God used me to deliver others, but he's used me to deliver myself also. Never think you're above God's word. Never think you uh, can roll uh, without Jesus. God wants us all to be obedient to him. So this course, I guarantee you, is going to be a life-changing course. And in the years to come, should Jesus tarry, what you learn in this course will be a blessing to you, your children, uh, your spouse, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and future generations. Uh, what you learn in this course will be a blessing to this nation and your nations. Yes, what you learn in this course can help you even to build a hedge of thorns around the President of the United States, ladies and gentlemen, around the Congress around the Supreme Court, around the King of England, around the, the prime minister of whatever nation. Ladies and gentlemen, if your government is not doing right, we have the authority as believers to, 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 to get them to adhere to the word of God. We have mighty weapons from God. So do not think that this course is just designed to help you and your, your spouse to get along uh, or or, 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 or help DJ and Mrs. DJ to walk the, the straight and narrow. No, no, this course goes way beyond what we can. But let's, we ain't going to pick on DJ Bailey. He's married. He's happy. Stay happy, man. Don't let anybody mess with you, man. Don't let him. Stay happy. 
but we just want you to open up your, your heart to realize that what you learn, the principles that you learn in this course will be life-changing, not only for you and your family, not only for your neighbors, not only for your church, not only for your community, but worldwide things can happen. You can use this, uh, these teachings in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, Coatesville, Pennsylvania, and and God, because of your faith and trust in his word, God can change things in Pakistan. You can use these word, these principles, Megan, in, in Tennessee. And, and God can change things in California and Oregon and Washington State. And so we thank God. We praise God. Praise God. Good to see you, Megan, again. She's been uh, working hard, and she's finally had an opportunity to come online with us live and doesn't have to work with the recording on, on, in this particular course. Praise God. Megan is a very outstanding and, and dedicated student, as well as all of you. Tonight, we're going to take a look at a pastor, a humble pastor named Hosea, and Hosea hears from God, and he obeys God. We're going to take a look at the pastor's wife, Gomer, Gomer, and then we're going to look at the, take a look at the pastor's church, A. He had some tough church folks he had to deal with. And then we're gonna take a look at the community, the nightlife, how his wife was attracted to the bright lights and, and the lures of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of pastor's wives going through and a lot of them won't say it to you. You men, they won't say it to you. And, and, and women, if, 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 if uh, uh, you got married after you became a pastor and then your husband say, I didn't, I, I, I ain't asked God for a preacher. I asked God for, for Leroy. I asked God for Cliff. I asked God for a DJ. I asked God for Larry Johnson. I asked God for whoever. I didn't expect to get this, but ladies and gentlemen, Stuff comes with the territory. Stuff uh, you 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 can't see the roadmap when when you when 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 you say, "Ah, uh, uh, will you marry me?" You, you, God doesn't show you the roadmap because if He did, a lot of us probably would not have gotten married. Okay, uh, um, and a lot of. A lot of us would not have a spouse. I mean, she'd have said, hmm, I ain't going down that road with you, Kenny. That's Cliff Baggett, y'all. I ain't going down that road with you, Kenny. And, and a lot of people have had experiences where the spouse went halfway with them down the road and said, hey, I can't take this. I, I, I thought church folks were supposed to be friendly and kind and loving and congenial compassionate, empathetic. But now I see a whole nother perspective of the church now that I hooked up with you, bro. And, 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 and a lot, a lot of pastors, wives are like, they use that expression that we used back in the late 50s, 1960, when I was a senior in high school. New Kapu, all through. Later, Gator got a cut. <laughs> now, that was, it, was, it was something stupid we said in high school. New kapoo all through. Later, Gator got a cut. In other words, I, I, I put you down. I ain't running with you anymore. I'm out of here. I am out of here. Later, Gator got a cut. Okay. <laughs> We're going to look at the, the pressures on the man of God. And the pressure's on his wife. Sin brings pressure. A person can be caught up in sin and not realize the 
immensity of the pressure. The sin, the pressure against this man's household, his children, those three little children. And, and um, when you magnify this and look at the whole body of Christ, and you look at the people who are not members of the body of Christ, the whole world is going through turmoil. And God has not saved us and placed us in the kingdom to be chumps and be punks and be kicked around and stepped over and rolled over. He has given us authority. And there are a lot of people, many, many of you, including me, you're facing stuff. And, and it's overwhelming. But through this course, you'll realize, hey, I can see light at the end of the tunnel. I can see clearly now. The rain is going. The sun is shining. There's a, a bright side somewhere. Don't you rest until you find it. It's going to get better. God's going to put that smile back on your face. He got, he's going he's gonna to turn that frown upside down. You know, it takes 34 muscles to frown, only 13 to smile. He's going he's gonna to take, take away a whole lot of extra weight, extra heaviness, all that effort to frown. He's going to turn that frown upside down, and he's going to release a lot of people from captivity through this course because God's word will not return unto him void. We're going to look at why God built a hedge of thorns around Gomer. And God builds it. We do not build it. Our course is entitled How to Build a Hedge of Thorns. And we must know that God builds the hedge of thorns. But God will build it based on our prayers. And our obedience and our heart toward him. So as we go through this course, oh, yes, Satan's going to bring to you remembrances of people who have done stuff to you, hurt you, broke your heart, robbed you, uh, abused you, humiliated you, and stuff you've done. But as you press through that, and realize that you're now under the blood and you're in a new relationship with Jesus Christ, that Satan cannot hold this stuff over you anymore. But if anybody has ever harmed you or hurt you, and there are many of you uh, live with us tonight and, and many listening uh, by way of the video, many of you have been hurt by people and it's hard to get over some of these hurts some of these hurts are deep and have been there for a long time. But through this course, you're going to learn how to release that person who hurts you. I'm saying that again. You're going to learn how to release that person who hurts you. No matter, listen, no matter what they did to you or how often they did to you. You must release them. And, and, and some of the people who hurt us are dead. Ain't nothing we can do for them. They're dead. And some of you say, they're dead. That's good. Okay. You know, somebody said, you're only supposed to speak good things about the dead. Yeah, he did. Good. No, no, well, no, 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 no. You release yourself. If, if someone hurts you and they're dead now and it's still bothering you, paining you, you are still their prisoner. And so we're coming out of prison. A lot of people are going to come out of prison by releasing the dead people who hurt you. Some of you may have been abused, raped, uh, 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 beaten, uh, caused to take, forced to take drugs forced to have sex, uh, forced to smoke weed, um, forced to lie, forced to deceive. 
I mean, the whole lot, whole lot of dramas in our lives. And a lot of it was connected with people who are no longer living. But we must forgive them if you are to be set free. And the purpose, ladies and gentlemen, of a hedge of thorns. Purpose number one is to protect the person whom we pray over. Protect them from Satan, from Satan's onslaught, and also to protect them from themselves. You're going to learn how to deal with minister to people who are suicidal. They want to harm themselves. You're going to be ministering to people who, who are so guilty of what they did that they uh, 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 just can't accept the forgiveness that the Bible promises, but they, they must somehow punish themselves physically or mentally. You're, you're going to learn how to minister to them and set them free. You're going to learn how to let the dead be dead. And you're going to learn how to let the living live because there are many who are living. They got heartbeats, blood running through their veins, but they're not living. Through a hedge of thorns, you can get somebody saved. You, when you learn how to pray the hedge of thorns around a rebellious person, you can get the backslider to come back to Jesus. You can get the rebellious child or the rebellious spouse or the rebellious you to get back on track. Through building a hedge of thorns, you can get the president of the United States to get back on track if he or she is, if he is on track, off track. You get the Congress, your local uh, 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 town at township county officials. Some of them are puffed up on pride and that little, little office, little position has gone to their head. You can stick a pin in their head and let the pus flow out of their head because a lot of them are pus heads filled up in pride. Let the pus flow out of their head. Let the air out of their tires so they can lead with dignity. You can get your pastor to humble himself or humble herself and minister to the flock. You'll be able to get the flock to minister to the pastor. You'll be able to get the mean folks to start acting like they've got some sense and some love in their hearts. And if you're angry and bitter and mean, you can stop being angry, bitter, and mean. But Cliff Baggett, it's only if you want it. It's only if they want to. You can build a hedge of thorns, and if the person does not want to change, then you've got to have that tough love, ladies and gentlemen. You build the hedge of thorns with love. You forgive the person. But if they want, don't want to change, they want to keep on doing those that methamphetamine and, and those opioids and that liquor and, 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 and sex with somebody else's wife and, and homosexuality or lesbianism, if they want to continue in it, you build a hedge of thorns around them. And then you step back and let God do what God wants to do. Don't get in God's way. Once we learn how to build a hedge of thorns, and we will practice this next week, once we learn how to build a hedge of thorns, you can't be a softy because the person you build a hedge of thorns around is going to be crying, sip sipping, sob sobbing, and, and, and trying to get your, your attention and, and get some sympathy from you. And Pastor Darnell, you got to learn how to be tough because the hedge is built by God and the deliverance comes through the power of God. 
and and there are some people we will build a hedge of thorns around or ask God to build a hedge of thorns around and they might not ever get delivered they may choose to keep on doing what they're doing and the wages of sin is death yes some might die some of the people listen carefully some of the people whom we ask God to build a hedge of thorns around just might die because we're dealing with some stubborn folks. We're dealing with people whom Satan has a grip on. He's had a grip on them for 40, 50 years. And just because you ask God to build a hedge of thorns around them, uh, that's not going to change them one bit. It's their choice. If they decide once you build a hedge of thorns around them, and they decide they're going to keep on making their own liquor and selling their liquor and robbing and stealing and beating up on people and breaking into houses and, and breaking up marriages and cheating and lying from the pulpit, then the wages of sin is death. Yes, some are going to die. But we're going to give it our best effort to get them set free, to get the prodigal son to come to his senses. Come on now. To get the prodigal daughter to come to her senses, to bring that child back home. Okay, that child's 60 years old now, time to come home. Time to come out of that world of sin. If they still, got, if they still have breath in the body, you still pray for them. Uh, 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 and, and if you have been making decisions, you've been doing stuff your way for, and you're saved. Yes. You're the pastor of the church. You're the chairman of the deacon board. You're the leader of the choir, but you're going to do stuff your way. Then you keep doing stuff your way. Okay. But if you build a hedge of thorns around you, and ask God, sincerely ask God, because you sincerely want to be delivered. Then make up your mind. I'm going to go through some tough times, no matter how tough it gets. I ain't going to quit. I ain't going to give up. I'm going to let God do it because I'm sick and tired of me. How many of you? I don't know if I should ask this or not because you're, you're on. we're on Zoom. But how many can wave and say, man, I have had experiences where I'm sick and tired of me. <laughs> oh yeah, been there, Pastor. <laughs> hey, Bryce, Bryce, you ever been there? Oh my goodness, yes, I have, Grandpa Leroy. <laughs> okay, you okay. wake up and look in the mirror, and you can't stand that person. <laughs> Man, you've been there too. You've been on that street too, Bryce. Oh yes, sir. Okay, okay. Who anybody else wanna wanna you've been there? You woke up in the morning. Oh man, you I gotta look at you again. Anybody been there? Come on, somebody talk to me. Yes. I'm so mad I can't get on Zoom. Come on. He can hear you though. Oh yes. That's my wife. <laughs> Hi. Hello everyone. Hello, Mrs. Bailey. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless yeah. you. I have been in that position. I, I I shared that story with someone. I was snot nose and crying and bawling, talking to God. I had enough. Something had to give. I need a change in my life. And it happened. It happened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's Mrs. Mrs. G DJ Bailey. Been married three days, four days. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, Pastor Lisa, come on, talk to us. Yes, I have been there. And I look at myself in the mirror and I said, God, I can't do this. Not another day. I can't. You have to help me because I'm sick and tired of myself. I need you to come into me and to do what you do best because I can't do it anymore. I try. Lord, I try. 
are you like me? I mean, I mean, have you ever run from past the mirror? You know, the mirror, you're going to run past it and not glimpse at it. Huh? You ever been there? Yes, I have. And sometimes you want to put a uh, sheet over it like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and just walk on, walk on by. <laughs> walk on by. <laughs> oh, pray. Well, it looks like, looks like everybody needs this course. Everybody needs this course. And, and, and we're going to learn as we go through this course. It's not just that guy out there or that guy share. Uh, that person sharing the other side of the bed with a, that person on the other pillow. It, it, it's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. Not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. Not my mother nor my father, but it's me, oh Lord. Well, praise God. As we examine ourselves and take a good look, we should expect a change to come. But I want to, I want to caution you to, to let you know that when you Build a hedge of thorns around someone. Please make note of this. The manifestations of what that person has been doing are going to get worse, increase. And a lot of you are going to say, well, huh, well, Pastor Carl, my teaching us, he said, this, this is a guarantee. It's going to work. Oh, yes, it's going to work. But you have to be patient and wait on the Lord. Because from the outset, whether you're praying a hedge of thorns around somebody else or whether you're praying it around yourself, if you're praying a uh, hedge of thorns, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So, so we're talking about love and patience and long suffering. You know, some of these fruits of the spirit that already are growing in us. Let them grow, okay? Let them grow. But in the end, we will see. We will see. I just want someone to just take time out right now and just tell me how excited you are about this course and what your expectations are. I'm very excited because I have to build the fortresses around a whole lot of people. So I need to know how to do it. And I'm very excited. Looks like we got us a new student here, y'all. <laughs> Praise God. And we want we want you sisters to embrace Mrs. Bailey and let her know that you care about her, you love her. And uh, and you brothers, uh, pray for Pastor Darnell. Praise God. It's not easy to take a, a, a step of faith and walk uh, uh, with, with a different person uh, in a new life. Okay. Uh, things don't happen overnight, but praise God. Uh, we can make it together. <laughs> if we try, if we try, they we can make it us. together. <laughs> They serenaded us yesterday in, your heart. in service. <laughs> <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Stacy Baggett, Stacy Baggett, does this sound like it's going to be a good course? How you mean, Pastor? It's for us. We, we're anxious to learn because not for us. I always need to clarify it's not for us, but we have an older son and it involves our grandbaby. And we've seen a time that that child at 11 years old would go lay hands on a grown man, a 77 year old man, and pray over that man. Him and his little suit up there at the front of the church didn't have a qualm about going up there and laying hands and praying on that older man. Amen. And he's totally, totally not. He's completely yeah. fallen away. He is the definition of the prodigal son right now. And there is grandbabies involved. Yeah. And it's hard when. When you don't talk to them in months and you get a phone call, well, they cut the lights off today. You know, well, son, you're totally capable. Last we heard, you were just rolling in it, buying the new stuff and this and that and the other, you know. And you just, you got to, we got to the point last year that we we didn't answer the money calls anymore. You know, we, we provided food. We, we did what we could, you know, but we don't answer the money calls anymore because, we know now what the money's going to. And it's not the light bill. So, 
it's just, but I know God, God's covering him. We, we got, it's to the point, we just got to lay it at God's feet. And yeah. he has to cover it with his blood and his head of thorn. He's got to move in the situation because we're at our wit's end with it. Praise God. Praise God. We thank God that you are candid and, and open and transparent and willing to share your situation and 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 your openness and transparency is is representing every one of us every one of us has that kind of hurt with someone in our family or a relationship but don't you quit don't you give up don't give up praise god the best is yet to come uh that little 11 year old boy he was who used to walk to the front of the church and lay hands on the old men God can still use that person in even a mightier way. Praise God. Praise God. And, and, and um, by building a hedge of thorns for this young man's protection and for your grandchildren and for future generations. See, we don't know whom we're hurting when we do what we do. But uh, as, as you build that hedge of thorns for the preservation of your son and, and to bring him back home and to, and, and preservation of uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren and future generations. You take your stand and trust in the Lord. Be like that father of the prodigal son. He kept watching down the road. Come on, somebody. He kept looking down the road. He knew his son was out there just messing up by the numbers, wasting his inheritance. And, 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 and he knew that someday he had faith. He had faith. I believe this, this young man <laughs> must have heard, this man must have heard about Job and asked God to build a hedge of thorns around his son was in a, who was in a foreign land. And one day he saw that son come back home. Didn't look good, didn't smell good, but that's my son. Kill the fatted calf. Here, take my ring, put my ring on his finger. My son, he was, he was lost. He's now found. He was dead. He's alive again. And we're going to see life, new life in our, our loved ones, uh, in our spouses, even in us, as we don't give up. See, we walk by faith. We are faith folk. We walk by faith and not by sight. The world will say, hey, what Pastor Carter is teaching, this is crazy. It doesn't make sense. Well, to the world, it doesn't make sense. You must be born again to see the kingdom of God. But we put our trust in the Lord. We are in the world, but not of the world. And God honors faith. Well, praise God. Let's turn in our scriptures, our scripture to Hosea. And as we read Hosea, Hosea is a real person. His wife, Gomer, is a real person. Those three children, Jezreel, Loruhama, and the last one. What's that last child's name? Loami. They have names that mean something. You know, um, be careful what you name your child or your grand. I mean. Dartavius. No, he wasn't named Dartavius. Uh, Zerunisha. No, 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 no. I mean, you're getting all kinds of names with children. Some of these folks are bad today and acting, acting crazy because you'd have named them, put the stupid name on top of them. And you'd have burdened them for the rest of their life, you know? But God gives the names for. Hosea's children, name this first one Jezreel, for I'm going to deliver. I'm going to deliver my people. Name this daughter Loruhama, means I'm not going to have mercy on my people. Name this third child Loami. Shame I. I mean, I mean. Eh. Hosea, from the naming of that third child, he's telling everybody in the whole community, in the church, she ain't mine. 
Now, you imagine the pastor naming, having a christening of the child and naming the child and telling the congregation, she ain't mine. She's somebody else's. That's, that's somebody else's baby. And he had to deal with this for years. The word of the Lord that came to Hosea, the son of Beeri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Hosea lived during the reigns of four kings of Judah and one king of Israel. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, check this out, go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom departing from the Lord. He just didn't tell Hosea to go take a wife and she was a whore. But this marriage was symbolic, ladies and gentlemen, of the relationship between God and the people of Israel and Judah. The land has committed great whoredom against me. And so God uses this pastor and his wife and children as examples of how the people were treating God. God is sensitive. He cares. He loves. He knows what it feels like to be hurt. He knows what it feels like to be dissed, to be uh, 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 left alone, to be kicked to the curb, to be abused, to be disowned. And the same thing that a lot of us have experienced, God has experienced it. Jesus, God on the cross said, my God, my God, why hast thou deserted me, forsaken me? Jesus on the cross watching the world laugh at him, calling him a fool. You saved others, save yourself. If you are the son of God, Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, cause these stones to be turned into bread. Jump off this high cliff if you're the son of God. And so God, because he loved the people, he chose a pastor. No, he, no the pastor had no clue when he committed his life to the Lord, he had no clue that he was going to go down the road that he went down. And many of us had no clue what road we're going down or have gone down. But when you commit your life to the Lord God through Jesus Christ, it's a commitment. Your life is no, not, no longer your own. And when you commit yourself to a spouse, to your espousal, we make holy vows. I promise to love, to cherish, in sickness and in health, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, till death us do part. And then many of us have been victims of divorce or have divorced others. We've broken those vows. And so in the next course, next semester, we're going to deal a lot with how to rebuild the follow-up course for this, how to rebuild healing and strength and dignity, not only in our lives, but the people we built the hedge around so that they can be open to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, whether we're still married with them or not. Whether we have a relationship with them or not, everybody ought to know Jesus and have a relation. So this is a, 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 the first semester of a two-semester program, a rebuilders program. First, we want to help get this relief off a lot of people by asking God to build a hedge of thorns around those folks who are messing up and hurting us, humiliating us. 
they're not doing the program any good. But in building that hedge of thorns, we build it with love. Yes, tough love. Tough love has to cry sometimes. Tough love has to say no. Tough love has to say, no, I ain't giving you no more money. Tough love has to look at the grandchildren who are not eating well and still say, I can't give that money because you ain't going to spend that money on them kids. Tough love uh, tosses and turns uh, at night, flips and flops from one side of the bed to another. I wonder, can I get a wave? Uh, you flip and flop from one side of the bed to the other because you're trying, you're doing the best you can. You're calling on the name, name of the Lord and it still hurts. It's still very, very painful. But yet, God has already been where you are. Jesus has already walked that road. And Jesus from the cross said, Father, forgive them. They know that what they do, even when they have coldly and, and, and meticulously calculated your demise and your downfall, they have shrewdly and very intellectually calculated how they're going to rob you of your inheritance, take down everything you got. Even when they hired the slickest lawyers and the slickest people, still, because of your love for them, you can ask God to build a hedge of thorns around them and shut their activity down for the sake of saving their souls. Because even the slickest, even the nastiest, the filthiest, the most uncouth person on the earth deserves a chance at salvation and eternal life an opportunity to repent and get right with God because when eternity begins, ladies and gentlemen, it has no end. Eternity has no end. You may say, man, I've been putting up with this for 50 years, but you, 50 years is a drop in a bucket when you look at the time people will spend burning in hell and their bodies will never be consumed, never, ever, ever, and the torment will never stop. That is why we must do all we can for our loved ones, those who hate us, those who have misused us, abused us, to get them to the place where they can repent and turn to the Lord. And even though, Pastor Lisa, we get sick and tired and sick and tired and sick and tired, not only of them, but us. I get getting sick and tired of me. And you hide yourself under the, you, you know, you, you look at the clock at seven o'clock in the morning. Oh my God. You cover your head with the pillow. I say, I hope I can just stay here for 12 hours, nonstop, uh, unmolested. Nobody called me. I don't even want to look at myself. I don't even want to hear myself snore. I can't stand me. I mean, it's one of these days. I just don't want to move. I don't want to put my feet on the floor. Just leave me alone. You know, I, I, I look, Pastor Carter gets days like that. And, and, and Jackie Carter, yeah, you have a whole lot of them. You know, I get days like that. And, 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 but, but it's worth it. God has us in this place for a purpose. Okay. God told the man, marry a whore. She's going to give you children out of whoredom. Those children ain't going to be yours. All of them are not going to be yours. They, all of them will not come out of your loins. And everybody in the community is going to know. They baby kids. So he went, verse 3, and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. So we know that first son, child was his. Okay. And the Lord said unto him, call his name Jezreel, 
for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. I'm going to avenge Jezreel. And Jezreel goes back to the time of Ahab and Jezebel. And I'm going to avenge all that filthy stuff they did. And I'm going to bring an end to the corrupt, adulterous, idolatrous house of Israel, who under Jeroboam uh, uh, built golden calves and said, this is your God. And they forsook me. I'm going to avenge through this child, Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto her, call her name lo Ruhama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. God said, hey, name this child, I will utterly take Israel away. I'm through with you, Israel. The marriage is over. And God considered himself married to Israel. The marriage is over. I'm giving Israel a divorce. God gave Israel a divorce. And, and Israel knew it because this child name meant God and we are through. We are finished. God is finished. He's kicked us to the curb. He's tired of our nonsense. He said he's through. He will have no more mercy on us. That'll change your whole worship, won't it? When you, when you hear God says, I, I'm not going to have any more mercy on you. But God says in his word, how long will I strive with this people? How long am I going to let them play me for a fool? God is saying. Now, when she had weaned Loruhama, she conceived and bare a son. She got pregnant again. And might have been Hosea's and it might not. But look, verse 9 says, Then said God, call his name Lo-Ami, for you are not my people, and I will not be your God. So we get an indication that was not Hosea's son. Somebody else's. And then, and then, chapter two, when you read it, read it with, under the uh, uh, telescope of, I'm sorry, the microscope of Gomer has left home. She packed her bags and left. And it's Hosea and the three children. And they're growing up. She'd been out there. She went back, and they use the expression, on the block. Say unto your brethren, Ami, and your sisters, Ruhama. God changed their names. Now it's not Lo Ami. You're not my child, but my child. And your sister, Ruhama, not Lo Ruhama. I will have mercy. So God's going to change the names. Years ago, we had a song. I told Jesus it would be all right if he changed my name. I told him it would be all right. I told him it would be all right. It's all right. It's all right, Lord. Change my name. Plead with your mother. Hosea is speaking to his children. God is speaking to Hosea. Plead with Israel. Plead with the nation. Not only plead with Gomer. Not only children, plead with your mother, my wife Gomer, who left me. But plead with the nation. The nation has turned her back to God. Read it with that perspective, ladies and gentlemen. For she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. And this course, how to build a hedge of thorns. We've got to plead with God to save the souls of our loved ones. As rebellious as some of them are and have been. We've got to plead with God for the souls of the ones who abused us, beat us, kicked us, knocked our teeth out, bashed our eyes in. Cause us to be on drugs or alcohol and humiliated us by 
drag out other women in the house when mama wasn't home. Yet we've got to forgive, ladies and gentlemen. And for the sake of the souls of our loved ones, could be your spouse, could be your child, it could be you. You're on a train and the train's off the track and you can't stop that train and get it back on track and you know it and, and you're the pastor you're the leader of the church and you know it you know you're you're a phony you're you're a perpetrator you're fake but there's hope for you to get back on track ask god to build a hedge of thorns around you you want to learn how join me next week Lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she, she was born and make her as a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with thirst. God might have to strip some of our loved ones naked. Pastor Baggett, God might have to strip that son of everything he owns. God might have to send him continuously to the food bank. God might have to have him standing on the street corner with a, corner with a tin cup. God might have him uh, 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 sleeping behind Chick-fil-A in a, uh, 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 a couple blankets with, with a, a, a shopping cart with all his belongings on it. A lot of God's people who turn their backs against God are sleeping behind McDonald's under the bridge, in the field, in the trees, in lean-tos and tree houses, in garages, in, in storage sheds, and some just out in front of the post office with all their worldly belongings, and they're sleeping, and that's the pastor's child. That's the former first lady of First Baptist. Lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born. Let's jump down to verse six. Key verse for this entire course, verse six. Megan, read this, please. Hosea chapter two, verse six. Can you unmute? Can you hear me? No, ma'am. Now I can now. Okay. Okay. Therefore, I will block her path with thorn bushes. So we'll walk her in so that she cannot find her way. Thanks. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up her way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. God is talking not just about her, Gomer. He's talking about the nation. He's talking about him. He's talking about your child, my child, your wife, my wife, your husband. I ain't saying my husband because I ain't got one. Okay. Uh, 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 God is saying I will hedge up their way. A hedge of thorns. I will hedge up their way with thorns. Now, I used this example a couple weeks ago. I love to pick blackberries, but blackberries don't love for you to pick them. They don't want to be picked. That's why blackberry bushes have thorns. Rose bushes have thorns. You can't, just can't jump on a rose and grab it and break it off from the, the, the vine. It's got thorns, and you can't just grab a handful of berries and pull a handful of berries off the vines, those thorns pick back. And so when you surround something with a hedge of thorns, whether it's an animal or a garden or a family member or a household or a church or a city, that means what's trying to get in at them can't get in. Satan's trying to get in, but he can't because the hedge of thorns prevents him 
from touching that child of yours. As nasty as that child has been, as rebellious and as mean and deliberate as that child has been, because you love that child, you don't want Satan to destroy that child and Satan's grabbing and he can't get in. Well, look what Satan told Job. I can't take Job from you. I can't, I can't, I can't uh, uh, take anything from Job, he told God, because you have a hedge around him. Take that hedge around from around him and I'll cause Job to curse you and die. And God said, well, you have my permission, but don't take his life. And Job went through hell on earth. But yet he did not compromise and curse God. His wife told Job, curse God. Children kept on acting and rebellious. And, and Job prayed for them and made sacrifices for them every day. But eventually those kids died. Those kids died because they chose not to uh, adhere to what their father was praying for. They chose the lifestyle. But yet Job did not give up on them. He kept praying, but they died. I don't know what happened to the wife. I think she died too. But in the end, God restored to Job more kids and probably another wife. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody said the road will be easy. Somebody said, I don't feel no ways tired. Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far just to leave me. Okay. Jackie Hamilton says Job got double for his trouble. All right. Double. Double or nothing. Yes, indeed. Double for his trouble. Okay. And verse six is Megan read, God says, I will build a hedge around her, a hedge of thorns to protect her so nothing can get to her. And also the hedge of thorns shuts her in. She can't get out. She cannot get out. Ladies and gentlemen, she was happily married for a while. Then she went back on the block. She said, my lovers are treating me better than my husband. She was all goofed up, messed up. She didn't know that it was, it was, it was Hosea and his hard work that blessed her to get food every day and stay healthy and strong. But she wanted what was out there. And there are a lot of folks, they are allured, tempted by the devil to go out there uh, uh, there's something, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain to see what he can see. Why did the chicken cross to the other side of the road to see what was on the other side? The grass is greener on the other side. There are a lot of people who are miscontented. They think there's something better. They're living in paradise now, but there must be something better. Woman wake up and I'm tired of looking at him. I need a fresh new face to look at. And he look at, oh mm, man, this is the, this, I married this. Mm. And, and then you look at yourself. Mm, I can't even stand you. You need to change. You look at you. Uh, okay, the bear went over the mountain. The chicken crossed to the other side. Sister Sally woke up one morning and, and looked in the mirror. Oh, she, she got back under the cover. She said, oh no, perhaps when I wake up again, I'll look a little bit better, but I can't even stand you. <clears throat> so Hosea obeyed God. God built a hedge of thorns around her. And this lets us know, the scripture lets us know, God builds a hedge of thorns. And we can ask God. We can look at the example of Job. Job had a hedge around his family. We can look at David. David had a hedge of thorns around his family until he met Bathsheba. When he met Bathsheba, he sinned and all hell broke loose. But David repented. Praise God, he repented. 
And now we see Hosea pleading with his children. Go find your mama. She's out there in the street somewhere. Tell her to come back to me. Tell her to come. I mean, I mean, I, I know y'all get tired of me talking about James Brown, but Jose was doing it. Please, 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 please. Tell your mama, please, 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 please come back to me. And all the begging and pleading and she out there until, until look at verse three. I mean, chapter three, chapter three. I want you to read all of one, two, and three, but chapter three, then said the Lord unto me, go yet love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord, of the Lord to the children of Israel who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. God's telling Hosea, go. It's time for you to go back out there and face that crowd. And I'm going to tell you what's happening. She's going to be on the block, sold on the block Thursday. I want you to go and bid on her, buy her back. Hosea, ladies and gentlemen, had to go and buy his wife back. Her pimp or pimps got tired of her. She wasn't making any money. She was not profitable. She was a hole who wasn't making any money for her pimp. No good to anybody. Used up. And God, see, see, God, no matter how messed up we are, God says, I can use Leroy. If, if, if Leroy will let me work with him, I can use him. Even though the whole town, the family, they kicked him to the curb. Nobody sees anything good. And he, you know, he stinks. He, he, he looks bad. He, he acts bad. But yet, if he will come to me, I can do miracles in his life. I'm a witness, ladies and gentlemen. I be a witness. Hosea heard from the Lord. The Lord said, go. She's being auctioned off in the town square. That's where they sold slaves. That's where they sold the whores. And I want you to go and buy her. Can you imagine the man of God publicly bidding on his wife? And, and God said, bring her back. In other words, don't just go and go through the motions of bidding. You bring her back. You pay whatever price you have to pay to bring her back because she's worth something to me. That ought to let you know how important you are to God. That ought to let you know how important people are to God. No matter what price you have to pay, bring her back home. And I see Jesus on the cross paying that price for me and for thee to bring us home, hallelujah, with him. Because he's got the plan. I know the plans I have for you. And so God even told Hosea, bring her back home. Tell her she will not play the harlot anymore. Tell her you will not punish her. Don't punish her. I will allure her into, the, into my wilderness, God said. I will allure her. And the scripture says, Unless the spirit draw us, we shall not be drawn. I will allure her. I will correct her. I will do what is necessary. You hear this, Cliff Baggett? I will do what needs to be done. You just obey me and go and buy her back. That's your wife. Don't worry about what the crowd will say. Don't worry about the church, what the church folks will say. Don't worry about what your whole inner being will say. Go, go, go. Bring her back. Mm. I love the, the musical Les Miserables, where Jean Valjean 
is singing that song. No, Marius is singing that song. Bring her home. Bring her home. Bring him home. You know, bring him home. Bring him home. No matter what you got to do, go and get that young man and bring him home. And so Hosea obeyed God. When that hedge of thorns was built around Gomer, God dried her up, took away her looks, her sexuality, her sexiness. Nobody wanted her. It's sad. I mean, it's sad. I mean, if any of y'all have ever, now, now, I don't know if I should say this tonight. If any of you have ever been to a whorehouse, you got some hoes sitting around there. Ain't nobody gonna spend no money. You got to be smack dab out of your mind to spend some. I've been in the military one time in the military. I only went to a whorehouse one time, Cliff Bag, and I'm gonna tell y'all. Now y'all say, well, Pastor Carter, you corrupt. No, I went to a whorehouse at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Why? Because all my friends were going there on Saturdays and they kept asking me, come on, man, you gotta go, you gotta go. But I was as a CQ charge of quarters, they let me be the CQ to issue the passes to the guys. And a guy would run in and, and an hour later, he's back broke, busted and disgusted. I said, now what's going on that they can go so quickly in the town and come back so quickly broke. So one Saturday I went with them and I just watched. And the guys would come in, all sit down at the table and then the whores would come and whisper in their ears. And, and next thing you know, a guy uh, uh, following a whore out the back door, gone up in the mountain on the hillside to the trailer. And I would time them. I'd time some. I, I mean, I was timing some of them. And, at, and, and, and then, uh, then one whore came to me. She said, well, now, what's wrong with you? you? You better than everybody else? Huh? She said, uh, all you need is 10 and 2. That means $12. 10 and 2. I said, no, I ain't 10 or 2, and I ain't giving you no 10 or 2. I ain't giving you 5 and 1. Well, what you doing here? I just came to, you know, help, help these guys get home. And she called me some kind of something about my mother. She said something about my mother. And uh, so I, I didn't deck her. I just said, no, but I ain't, I, ain't spending, I ain't spending no money. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen I have never spent a dollar on a hoe. And that's one thing I can be thankful for. Hallelujah. Praise God. Even though they called me names and on the way back, my friends laughed at me. Yeah, man, but they were broke. And I had some spending change for the next week, couple of weeks to the next payday, you know, but I watched them and it was a shame how quickly they spent their paycheck and how quickly And I could tell some stories. I'd tell them to Cliff Baggett and doing that, but I ain't telling you ladies but what some of the guys said. And so, and so, and so here is Gomer, broke, busted, and disgusted, not worth a dime to anybody. Ain't nobody, nobody wants, wants her. Somebody bid on her, though, and Hosea outbid. He had to outbid because guys, they outbid everybody. And he bought her. Can you imagine somebody bought you with a bushel of barley and a half a bushel of barley and, and, and a little bit of change? Because that's all you were worth? But she was worth much more than that to God. She came home and the Lord worked with her and Hosea obeyed God and didn't go upside her head, no baseball bat, no grits and gravy. No hot grits and gravy, no grandma's lie, no lie in the face. You know, Hosea just patiently took care of those kids and cooked those meals and cleaned the house and, and, and kept pastoring the church until his wife got right, until the Holy Spirit got her right and, 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 and got her to the place, hallelujah, to the place where she could be a wife again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And ladies and gentlemen, I've been there, done that. God had to get me to the place where I could be a, a servant of the Lord once again. God has got me to a place where I could be a, a, of help to somebody, a, a, a place of dignity. So, so don't any of you 
please don't don't go there. Don't go there. Every one of us has been in some place. And God had to snatch us out of the fire, had to snatch us out of that place of indignity and, 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 and give us dignity. And I, I thank God for salvation, for the gift of salvation and eternal life. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for his patience. I look back, my soul wonders how I got over. Man, I mean, through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. Oh, man, I wish I could preach tonight, but I ain't going to preach tonight. I'm just grateful. Not only am I grateful. Oh, man, I feel so good tonight. I am not just grateful for me, but I'm grateful for thee. Look where the Lord has brought us from. I was sinking deep in sin. Somebody said, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. Love lifted me. Gomer can say, love lifted me. Hosea can say, love lifted me. Job can say, love lifted me. David can say, love lifted me. And you can say, love lifted me. And in a short while, Pastor Bagger, that son of yours is going to say, love lifted me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And many of you, many of you who are feeling dejected right now, going through many trials and tribulations, are going to say, love lifted me. You just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. People get ready. There's a train of coming. You don't need no ticket. Just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. Don't need no ticket. You just thank the Lord. You just thank the Lord. You just trust God. Trust God. Yes, he will do it. Wait on the Lord. Wait on him for that wife. Wait on him for that child. Wait on him for that grandchild. Wait on him for that president. Wait on him for that council member. Wait on him for that pastor. Wait on him for that sinner. Wait on him for that alcoholic. Wait on him for that whore. Wait on him for that drug dealer. You just wait. Build that hedge of thorns around them and wait. Just wait. Just wait. Whew, I can see. I can see that father. He went out and he looked down the road and he said to his wife, Mabel, Mabel, look, Mabel, come look. That's our boy. That's our boy. He, he's coming home. He's coming home. He's coming home. And I could see that father take off a running. He took off a running. And he threw his arms around that child. He forgot all the hurt and the pain, all the humiliation, all the degradation. He said, this is my son. He was lost and now he's found. He was dead, now he's alive. Kill the fatted calf, put a ring on his finger. Let's have a barbecue. Go and get the neighbors, go and get the family. This is my son, he's back. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and that's how God feels about us and those we pray for and those we forgive and those we love and those whom we give God a chance to work with. Let's learn how to trust God to build a hedge of thorns around our loved ones and around us, praise God, it might take a minute. It might take some time. God is faithful. I thought I needed the tissues for Cliff Baggett's class and Cliff and Stacy's class on Friday. Uh, I tell you, you never know when you need a box of Kleenex in this school. I'm going to turn the service over to my beloved Jackie Carter. She will give us closing comments and closing prayer. And um, we hope to have the 
recording via YouTube for you for next time. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Wow. Um, as I sometimes say, he goes from teaching to preaching. <laughs> and, and there isn't always a distinction. Um, but it's an awesome lesson today. And it's just amazing how you can, one of the things about the word is you can read it over and over and over again. And every time you discover something new, something else speaks to you or you get some additional understanding or something that you can relate to that you didn't before. And for me, um, that is, that's kind of what happened tonight. There were, there were new uh, revelations um, that uh, I was able to see. There are no questions in the chat. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments that you wish to share at this time? Okay. Um, and, and I'll just say this, as many times as I have read um, chapter two of Hosea, and read chapter six. In fact, I have a couple of Bibles that I vacillate between. Um, and when I looked at one of them, um, the everyday Bible, which I like, I had it starred, I had it highlighted, um, but it never really, as, as many times as I have heard the phrase hedge of thorns, it, the two never really connected um, in terms of what an actual hedge of thorns were so that was just it was a, um, a clear revelation for me tonight and that God actually said that he was going to build this wall um, of thorn bushes around um, Gomer but anyway if there are no comments and no questions um, you know maybe some of you like me have prayed uh, fervently for change and didn't realize that that's what you were praying for was that hedge of thorn you you were just praying for a change uh, whether it was in somebody else or in yourself so i am really looking forward to next week so i can make sure i'm getting it right um i'm, I'm following the the recipe i'm following the directions and and make sure that, that I have it right. So if there's nothing else, then we will close. And for those of you who are joining us on uh, tomorrow, we look forward to seeing and hearing from you as we uh, meet with um, Pastor Christina, and we'll talk more about uh, hearing the voice of God. And then for those of you who are joining us again on Wednesday, as we look at Jesus and the four gospels, and then on Thursday, the original Jackie Carter will talk to us again or share with us again about um, our relationship with recognizing the Holy Spirit. And then on Friday, um, we learn uh, additionally how to be badass advocates and um pastor kind of skips around it i don't know why because he's up front about everything else he says but um i'm finding that book to be uh in that study to be more and more applicable even as i ministered with someone today and encouraged them that that's what they needed to be in, in this situation and in, in that book really, uh, in our study last week, really gave me additional ammunition to, uh, to encourage them with. So we look forward to those of you who will be joining us the remainder of the week. And for those of you who aren't, we'll see you next week. And Megan, it is absolutely wonderful um, to see you again. It, it's great when I can actually say, I know you, I've met you, I've seen you. Um, it makes it just that, that much better. So for those of you who I haven't, and I can't think of anybody that's on tonight other than maybe CK. 
um, and Marie that I haven't met, and, and the newlyweds, of course. Um, I'm going to have to give uh, uh, Mrs. Bailey a call and personally congratulate her because um, it's 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 very different, um, very different being a, a, a pastor's spouse, especially one who is actually um, shepherding a flock, a church, a brick and mortar church. It's very, very different. Um, so um, look for a call for me so, from me soon. And uh, just to congratulate you personally. And thank you so much for sharing. With that, let us just, uh, just take a deep breath. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity tonight to listen and to learn to be students of your word. We thank you for using Pastor Carter, Father, to enlighten us and to help us learn more about how to protect those that we love and also how to protect ourselves. And as we go forth, understanding your word and what it says, Lord, help us to, to look at Job and to look at David, to look at Gomer and so many others, Lord, whose names we can call, who have had hedges built around them. Not all were perfect, Lord Jesus, but they all loved you. If not in the beginning, they came to see and to understand what it meant to be uh, embraced by your protection. So help us individually and help us collectively, Father God, to, to learn how to pray and how to be patient and how to wait. Not for selfish reasons, but because we love others and also because sometimes we need to be saved from ourselves so that we can do the work that you have planned for us to do. We thank you and we ask your love and your blessings and your protection, Father God, upon each one who is here tonight, those who will are on by way of uh, YouTube Live and those who will get the recordings, Father God, that we may become better as we learn more about what you would have for us to do because your plans are greater than any plans we may have. We may not know what the plan is, Father, but we can rest assured that you have a plan and it's greater than any plan that we could have for ourselves. And now, Father, we ask that you bless us and guide us and keep us throughout this evening until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.